and that's the way it's all been set up is to fracture us all and we've all witnessed what's gone on in the alt media uh with chain alan kim tank etc this this year alone and people wanting to go off and do their own things largely using thi ideas i might add um which i find disappointing and we have to uh learn to come together you know and cut personalities out of it i don't particularly i've made it quite clear i don't like tank but uh the, the because i don't like him doesn't mean to say we the people can't all come together under one body the people's club where we're all pulling in the same direction we don't have to agree or like the lead people whether it's me or whether it's kim whether it's tank whether it's anna von Wright, john the rash or kevin annett you know it's agreeing we can agree to disagree on on points but suddenly with those groups you have the building of a format of a people's movement and the fact that three of them are involved in law uh, tank in a roundabout way although we try to harvest national liberty alliance to do so uh we we can create committees under the people's club and go forward with all these committees now kim was asking for them but we we'd already built that you know we built the thi state groups which was copied by anna von wright she created assemblies the same thing tank just copied her and national liberty alliance you know and and john uh, and carl have been doing it before before we were with the grand juries and uh, and the ver in the various states and counties so you know it's about us all coming together and <clears throat> it's just we're not gonna um thrive by splitting each other's groups up and certain people wanting to go the ego rouse of you know it's my name my group and all this rubbish you know uh it's not going to work it's never worked in the past and it's not going to work in the future and this is why it's important and why the tpc and thi was created in the way of getting people to understand we've all been lied to we've all been duped the so-called um bastions of security and our well-being of society are all working against us whether that's hospitals doctors um judges social services governments etc you could go on and on none of them are looking after us and we can all wait for pleiadians and all kinds of other uh, exotic uh, beings to come and save us or we can actually do something ourselves and push forward you know um many of the things i've said in the show lots of you didn't agree with initially but over time we've all seen the evidence you know there was a video posted uh, by mark lacasse today um which i posted in the mewe you know we put out about the factions no one had heard of factions including kim when i first outed that in november of 2015 i was still in cosmic voice then and this video is explaining with QAnon and all the other ones that are on the internet, the webs and able dangers, they're all part of a psyop against we the people. And this is what I kept warning of. It's not that I'm discounting their information because their information is largely valid. Um, um, is largely valid, <coughs> but on, it's not valid for we the people it's fad it's valid because we're finding out more and more of the of the lies that's been told to us but these people are not out in this information are not out in this information for our benefit they're out in the information for their own faction because they all want to be the new king of the world well it's not their world it's ours and we, we can carry on uh, being divided with each other. I've just spent three hours on a call trying to um, sort out THI Ireland because of the damage that Alan did. 
um, and about us all coming together. You know, if Alan wants to do his own pay it forward, fine. But don't disrupt other people's groups whilst you're doing it. It's not helping anybody. And so today what we're looking for is how we build the TBC. You know, um, I'm more than delighted with the donations we get. Uh, you can always want more. Um, but then the idea is um, a THI members then go out and get donations from outside of THI. That's how it grows, you know. And maybe many of you can come up with ideas how we do that. Because the alternative of waiting for trust funds, you know, uh, do I think they'll come out? Uh, I can't guarantee anything. You know, we just can't. You know, I spoke to the, about that on Tuesday when one of the members, uh, Liam, was going to borrow £110,000. 100 or I'm I'm not... Uh, having that on my conscience. We're asking a member to put in £100,000, which is about $125,000, with no 100% guarantee that the trust funds will come out. Kim can't give you that guarantee either. It's a promise, but then Kim promised to fund the TPC and has now changed tune on that. Um, so the, that, that promise went anyway. You know, um, but, you know, with the, with the $1 or more, and we can get 1% of Americans to chip in that $1, you know, you're talking for 30, 30 million a month. Imagine what we, the people, can do with 30 million a month. Just 1% of Americans. Or even 3 million. You know, there's a lot of failing business at the moment that we could actually uh, buy up as the TPC and turn them from corporate into cooperative. You know, um, and we can make it work. It's been proven to work because Liam has been running a cooperative uh, for cooperative businesses now, and then ran a fifth based on the TPC2 video that I did when we were talking about staff only working four days a week, not five or six or seven in some cases. <clears throat> and it does work. It's, all, it's, it's a matter of sharing. But the, these are the, the guidelines and the premises of what the TPC is all about. Need, not greed. Caring and sharing. Cooperating, not corporate. Not competitive and comparative. You know, where ownership of a TPC company is shared amongst all the staff. It doesn't belong to the manager or the CEO. In fact, there is no CEOs. Technically, the company is owned by the TPC. But that doesn't mean that the three directors currently own, own those businesses. No, it belongs to us all. And only that way are we going to go forward in a better way with business, with schooling, with housing and all the other ideas and solutions we've come up with, you know, that's uh, so far removed from current life, which is not working for any of us. You know, some people may be more successful with pieces of paper with numbers on, uh, but over time, those pieces of paper with numbers on are going to disappear from all of us. That's what they're doing. That's what they have been doing. That's what we've warned about in the clowns in panic and now you're all seeing it it's a billionaire's game and everyone's going to get cut out of it including millionaires that's why they're all leaving new york and so over time those people will end up joining us if we build it and it's important we build it i spoke recently about the 20 30 000 in each state if we can get 20, 30,000 TPC members all pulling in the right direction, we have the power. We can get our candidates in. You know, at that point, when it goes political, we would change from the People's Club to the People's Club Party. It would have to be separate from the TPC because we're not allowed to be involved in politics. So, um, okay, just letting more people in. And so, that's 
the, the way to go forward. You know, uh, we can wait on Palladians and wait on Trump and wait on Kim or anybody else. It's not really helped us. And even if the trust funds come out, things are not going to change in the right way because people are still operating in the old way. You know, greed, not need. And so I'm hoping you can all come up with ideas of how we grow the, the people's club. Maybe uh, the idea I had with the Cosmic Towers, which I've pulled out of because of um, far too many accusations of me um, mis uh, misappropriating funds when there's absolutely zero evidence of it. Um, uh, I, I just don't, do not want to get involved in another financial uh, involvement. And so, um, but you know, if we maybe set up a TPC website and people can put their stuff they want to sell uh, on, a, on a wider audience. Um, and, and I know Ramona was going to speak to a CBD healing potion company uh, that wanted to sell their wares and give me a cut of it. Well, I'd, I'm not interested in cut. I get enough from my Patreon at the moment. And so, you know, any um, extra or over should all go to the TPC, not me. You know, and so may, maybe that's an idea people can put forward. You know, I'm looking for ideas of how we expand the group again. Um, of pulling in members that it's about the People's Club. You know, they don't have to listen to THI. They don't like me, fine. You know, um, it's not about me or whether people like me. It's about all the people coming together. And I, I just don't see the value of having Kevin and Ed's group, John Darash's group, and Anna Von Wright's group all discussing similar things, but being divided in, into three groups. We're not going to go forward divided in groups. We're, the only way, the only thing that's never been done is we all go forward together in one group. And that's what the People's Club's all about. That's what, why it's called the People's Club. You know, and eventually, once it gets to phase eight, and we've bought some businesses and done some projects and, and um, come up with different curriculums, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we would then be looking to split off from TPC and, and create a political environment whereby if we don't like candidates A and B and you've got 20, 30,000 in, for argument's sake, THI Texas, or maybe not Texas, let's use uh, Arizona. Texas has got more, more bigger population. Uh, THI Arizona, if we've got 30,000 TPC and they're all pulling in the same direction and candidate A will not bow to the people's club wishes because at that point we would have political committees to decide we want this bill to be put forward for we the people. Well, if candidate A is not going to do that, it only takes one email from head office of THI Arizona and go, we're not voting for that candidate. And then we go to candidate B are you going to implement these bills for we, the people of THI Arizona, if they say no, and then you vote them out and then we put our own candidates in because of 20, 30,000 TPC members voting for a, a, the People's Club Party candidates in 40 of the 50 states, we're going to get our own representatives in. Then we have the power. That's the only way we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna change things. You know, the trust funds will change people's lives, but if you're gonna carry on with the same program, nothing's gonna change. Change comes from within. You know, you can't expect Trump to do this, this, and this, and and you not change. We all have to change at some point. We have to be the change, not wait for it. You know, we've all waited for RVs to come out, birth certificates to come out, and even the trust funds now. It's four and a half years now. You know, and there's valid reasons for it not coming out, which you've all heard. 
But how long are we going to wait for Kim to deliver trust funds, whether she gives it to the TPC or not? You know, Tank, Tank was waiting 13 years for the RV. It never arrived. It never was going to arrive. OPPT is another one. And collateral accounts with Neil Keane is another one. You know, all of them in the past decade, not one of them have delivered. And so do we sit around waiting like a Drake Club or Q? You know, it's, it's all coming, it's all happening. Or do we do something ourselves and build the People's Club? Anyone want to chime in? Perhaps we could get the TPC directors first and then we'll throw it open for ideas from everyone. Uh, Holly. Hi, guys. Hi, Holly. Hi. Um, I, I'm not real business-minded, but um, I really liked what Lee said on the last Zoom call we did. Um, about helping each other right now. Um, those that are members that have been hanging around for a while and are struggling, I like that idea. Um, I'm kind of with Tommy on not uh, funding the, the towers. There's just too much and uh, too much unknown there um, with uh, not having a a, a business address and website and phone number and all that stuff. So, um, but I'd like to hear what, what you guys all have to say. You're on mute, Michelle. You're next. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, my thoughts about, um, and I, I have some very limited experience in fundraising, but um, my thoughts at this point are if we can get together a flyer that describes basically what TPC is, that we're a 501c3, one or two paragraphs of some of the people we've helped, um, emphasizing the fact that the TPC books are open and transparent, and some business cards, and now is the time to hit businesses in our cities and areas. I'm, you know, I'm in Casa Grande. We actually have a, a Frito-Lay company, which is rather large, the potato chips and all that. There's some uh, you know, big businesses, this car dealerships, this things around here. Now is the time to hit them, their HR, because by the first of the year, their budgets are in place and all businesses have tax write-offs and charity tax write-offs. And being a 501c3, we're perfectly um, positioned that way. But now is the time to talk to them and get them to see if these businesses will donate funds um, at, for as a tax write-off, because after the first of the year, it's really too late. They're already budgeted their funds and tax write-offs for charities. So now's the time for people to do cold calls or call first, but hit HR, talk to uh, people that uh, you can present TPC to and have your flyers and business cards in hand for that. Uh, now's the time to do it. See if we can get into their um, budget before it's set and in stone for the first of the year. After that, they have just very, very limited extra little funds for charities. Now's the time to get included in budgets for business. And that might be a good way, foot in the door. They'd be aware of TPC and maybe pass the information on to their employees, but at the very least get some more funds going. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Now to 
uh, Michael uh, Jail probably the last time I, it, I looked at the website, it had the um, the IRS stamp of approval for the 501c3. If you're approaching a company uh, verbally, a copy of that off the uh, the People's Club website, which proves the mm -hmm. it's the designation letter is called. So you could go in, you would go in with the designation letter and go, no, we are the 501c3 and here's our card and we'd like you know everyone to chip in another selling point is that, that none of the directors are current, currently being paid and it will it will require um a substantial amount to go into the people's club before the directors are paid we've all agreed with that and so you know you'd be looking probably near half a million Upwards of a million upwards before, uh, before the directors are being paid. So this is this is a company that's different. Mm -hmm. We're going to do things differently. You know, you can point them to the two videos of what we're trying to do, and it's not about uh, these CEOs are uh, all earning two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars like other charities. We're earning nothing until. The bigger funds arrive and so that's another selling point you know because these charities set up as you all know clinton foundations it's just a tax write-off and more skullduggery to take money away from the people and full and fund their programs you know um maybe you know i've said this uh some of the ideas where we, we all approach our own circle, our own family, if it's friends, if it's a social gathering, it's a church gathering, it's, it's the soccer club or soft, softball club, and just promote the uh, THI, you know, it's only a dollar. You know, everyone can afford a dollar, you know, a dollar or more, a dollar a week's even better, five dollars a week's even better. But if we get one one percent of Americans to put one dollar in a month, we've got thirty million dollars for we the people. We can do an awful lot with thirty million dollars, and employ an awful lot of people, including all of THI. And the reason we would do that is because essentially you've all grown up with THI of the new way. We cannot replicate the old system if failed us all, including the so-called top people. The royals, they got cut out seven years ago. They thought they were top of the tree. Uh, wrong. And everyone's cutting each other out. And it's a billionaire game, largely run by the Hebrew and Anaki crew. Yet again, it's harvesting humans is what they do. And so we have to fight back. We have to, we cannot wait for others to do it. We have to do it ourselves. And the, uh, the benefits of doing it ourselves also increases your frequency and it also increases soul development on a rapid rate. So that, there are other benefits. While you may put X amount in one month, you may not get some back for five, 10 years, but you're getting it back in other ways. And, that, and the importance of people contributing, you know, is far more beneficial. And Kim agrees with this. Is far more beneficial if we can get one percent of Americans to chip in one dollar or more. And at the minimum, we would have thirty million. That is only going to be the people. It's not going out the back door to Treasury departments and all kinds of other clowns. It's not going to feed greedy people who want to go out and buy Mercedes and tanks, uh, yes, you tank, uh, it's, it's going to go to build a better world for all the people, and I mean all. With 30 million, we can end homeless. With 30 million a month, we can end poverty in one month. And suddenly then we have a movement for the first time in history of a bundle of people coming together and they become the power by sheer numbers. 
you know, so we could go out into our own circle and, and you know, shame them into it. You know, everyone can afford one dollar or more a week or a month. Everyone. You know, they'll, they'll throw all kinds of money at, you know, what was it, Biden at $416 million for a, a kiddie fiddler? You know, imagine what we, we, we the people can do with $416 million. People are just giving it to the wrong people over and over and over again. Why, do, why does Trump and Biden need $1 billion each to dupe the people in, into four more years of loads of promises and zero delivered? You know, and people can say tr Trump's different. Well, I, I, I rolled out the whole list of, of the work that I've done and Kim, and he's done none after four years. None. So why why should we think it's going to be different four years later? You know, four years ago, this time, four years ago, everyone's glad they're getting rid of Obama because it can't get any worse. It's not really got any better with Trump, has it? It's another saviour program. And Trump may go and arrest a few faction members, and that's all they're doing, they're not arresting people or exposing people for the benefit of we the people and look, we, we're, we're applying justice. They're arresting them so that their faction becomes the top of the tree to replace M. That's all I do. So if you want to watch that video, um, bowing to Facebook about uh, Jason Goodman, um, a guy called Watkins, it tells you all the factions in the alt media. This is what I've been warning you all about. There is no group operating for and by the people outside of THI as a collective movement. None. If there is, please bring them to THI and we'll all join up together. Anyone have ideas? Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in now. Um... The first thing I'd like to say is relative, and so I'm with TPC Texas, we've been getting that up and going and organizing it. But I think one of the things that I've learned in this process is we talk a lot about in service of self versus in service of others. But I'd like to redefine that a little bit and make it in service of self versus in service with others. Because to me, that's what we really got to learn in this lifetime is how do we work with others to make a greater whole for, for the whole community. So that was the first point. The second point is Thomas brought up the uh, issues relative to the political middle. I did a lot of political fundraising. I was known as, in the company I worked for, I was known as uh, Mr. Personality because I carried the checks. But up until about the late nineties, the middle always had control. So the two parties could not separate themselves completely. They had to go after the middle. And that I think is a very good point that Thomas has brought up is that we need to find that middle and they know that they have to bend to us or they don't get reelected. We can look at that, but when you look at it from racial politics, the races are basically taken for granted because they're gonna vote the same way no matter what. So that's one place to change. I like what Michelle said the interesting thing is, is how do we evolve the website to be more, uh, um, uh, and we've been doing this at TPC Texas, which coming up with websites <clears throat> for our uh, uh, agriculture operations and our school operations that we're building. But how do we build that website? That's, an, that's gonna be an interesting point. Um, and she brings up the fact that uh, trying to get the solicitations and having done the budget for a major corporation at one time, they're at the point now that by December 1st, if they haven't blown out their budget, they don't get the money again next year. So those decisions are being made now. And, and, and Michelle brought up a very good point of how do we kind of coordinate to try to get in position for that. How we do that exactly, I'm not sure. But then the last point I wanna make is, talked about gatherings well, I think if there's a gathering going on, if we can 
get in, say it's a church gathering or some other community gathering and somebody's involved in it, if more of us can go out and get involved in that day and in that process, then we'll be seen in more light by a much, um, by a greater number of people. Anyway, yes. those are my thoughts. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Michael. I, I'd like uh, Amy to give us an update on TPC Texas shortly. But mm -hmm. uh, regards to the okay. website, um, <laughs> uh, our friend Alan was supposed to be um, building the website not only for um, improving the People's Club one, but a, a global website. Um, and uh, I know Michael was involved in some of it. And then, unfortunately, Alan went sideways. Um, but the, maybe we need to uh, put out, and I can do it in the next show, uh, ask for website designers where we can push it on and make, you know, the website uh, a bit more up to date. Uh, it was kind of done in a bit of a rush at, at the time with all that was going on back in 2016. And so maybe we can update it and, and then come up with other ideas where, you know, for the People's Club. And then we share that website with all the states. So it just becomes the People's Club, mm -hmm. Texas or whatever. You know, and, and the idea was then to give it all that website, the standard website where everyone has the same information. You know, we have to go back to being standardized because everything is all over the place now and nothing works because there's nothing standard about any walk of life anymore. And so everyone has the same information. And that was the idea that Alan uh, was working on, but unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Alan's kind of uh, got a bit sideways, so that we were working on that, Michael. And maybe we have to look for more people to get involved in how we build the website, and maybe even build a financial shop or a TPC shop where people can uh, put up their items for sale, and then there's you know, for argument's sake, it's a pair of shoes, thirty dollars. And then two or three dollars goes to the TPC, you know, uh, whatever people agree, agree to, you know, that way we can all get rid of some stuff out of our house, which is just gets taken from one box to another more times than not. And, you know, we can encourage that in the community. And so maybe that's the way forward with a website where we can sell our, our wares, you know, people, there's, I know there's people in the group who are artists and may want to sell their paintings and stuff like that. And we can add the, that website with a small commission for the TPC. Maybe I'll ask Ramona uh, later as she's spoken to the CBD people. They, they want to sell all their wares uh, with, T, with THI because they list the regular listeners to THI. Um, and instead of me getting uh, a commission, which I don't want, um, it all goes to the TPC and we can employ somebody to run the website, you know, where whatever sales there is, you, you would have a commission based on it, for argument's sake, 10%. 7% um, goes to whoever runs the website and 3% goes to the TPC or five and five, you know. So that way, as it grows, we'll include more. So we're now employing somebody, which is, you know, not everyone's doing like me, but uh, Michelle and Holly working for free uh, and Michael, Michael J as well. You know, um, we can start employing people based on those sales. So if people want to come up with other ideas uh, for developing that or pushing that forward, then we're all ears. Amy. Okay, thanks, Thomas. Um, these are not at all prepared comments and my thoughts are all over the place, but I think the trick is, or the, the challenge is visibility and spending what for us is a small amount of money in the wisest ways to gain that visibility. And we had thought about starting a shop 
but I think it would be so much more powerful to get a Shopify front or whatever storefront is liked and get an all America or all North America shop going or even an Etsy like store um, that goes everywhere because there are so many incredibly gifted people in the group and the visibility for all of TPC's ideals would be um, would be moved forward really rapidly, I think, through our shop. And I know Stephen had been um, thinking about doing that in Texas, but it is it is kind of a bigger um, undertaking than just five people in one TPC group. So I think that would um, get us a lot of bit visibility very quickly, especially if we did some advertising for it. Um, I know we're looking for ways to have little bite-sized bits of language and videos that if we did do a clean up in Houston in a community that Valerie is interested in doing after a hurricane or something like this, that we could win a way to get a platform. Because I, I love Michelle's idea, but I, I think this is sort of beyond flyers. We've got to get some kind of a platform where we can um, talk about the people's club on the ground since you're doing it from the air um, we have to do it on the ground to large sweeping groups of people when there's just five of us so I know that that is one of the challenges that we face and I know Jim Peck in our group he just got three council people in a really corrupt little city on the other side of Austin he got three council people ousted by um, doing a recall um, campaign and effort and they didn't get the signatures they needed but they got three people to resign and presumably he's gotten to talk um to whoever did sign those petitions maybe two or three hundred people about the people's club so that's very cool so we've kind of divided it up where everyone's working on what they work on but i have two or three really specific suggestions one is that there's a huge market need for online and homeschooling curricula, and that's why we're still really trying to carry forward SHI, which is Science, Knowledge, Intuition, Energy, A Space of Love. That's the name of our school effort, um, putting the philosophical underpinnings um, into that school, and then the school itself could be as simple as the Prenda schools, where you get five or ten kids in a home and just let them be and let them be themselves and um, learn in a loving, critical thinking atmosphere. And, and Michael can speak very specifically to that. So that's a huge market need that THI can fill because we have all the people that can do that if we collaborate across groups. And another little idea is this group has talked about tiny homes many times and I'm not trying to raise any business. I'm only looking for collaboration, but I've had to take a second job, for example, right now selling tiny homes on commission because my company, our company is not doing well. And you could do the kind of thing where if people were ready to start a community or people could identify a community um, that could start, then, you know, if they want to buy tiny homes out of Texas, for example, I would make donations to the People's Club out of any commissions that would, that would uh, you know, feed the People's Club. So we need to look for collaborations like that amongst our group with the activities that they're already doing on their way. And Thomas, I don't, I don't know how you're going to respond to this at all, because I don't think you liked the idea the first time, but I don't see why for a donation to the People's Club, people couldn't receive a lovely free copy of From Russia With Love, all neat and tied up in a bow the way you want it as a thanks for making, um, well, for making uh, a donation to the People's yeah. Club. Yeah. Um, so those are some thoughts, and I'll I'll stop. Yeah, yeah uh, that's fine by me. It goes on, you know. It was other members' idea about the book. Everyone's asking me, can we do a book? And we can. I was hoping to get it done, or a portion. You can't do it in one book. There's too much, and it may come in four parts. And and the idea was to sell it and all the money goes to the TPC. But, it, you know, uh, I'm open, always open to suggestions. You know, um, most of it's pretty much written anyway. It's a matter of ed editing. And I would say out of the 10 we've done, we would have to do probably four parts, three or four parts, 
to it because it, it, it's too much for one book per mm -hmm. se. Um, and, you know, if, if maybe it's um, like a, an inner competition, if you like, um, which is useful, uh, whereby if we did the website earlier, there's nothing stopping you putting the tiny homes on the website. See? Uh, you know, and maybe there's like a bestseller per month and they would get a free copy. You know, there's, you know so you, you can, there's ways of competing that are not good, or most of them, but we can push each other forward because the, the, the winner of the competition at the end of the day is the TPC, not on an individual basis. Uh, someone else wants to come in. Thank you. Thanks for hearing from Texas. I appreciate that. Well, uh, hopefully, the, um, I'm going to bring uh, Susan in next. Um, well, hopefully, there's someone from THI California because we kind of laid out a whole plan for three ex three extra acres that the TPC was in park and a fund, certainly for the equipment. Um, any plants or um, we could push that forward as a market um, which would then be, become I know they've already done their own personal marketing and um, certain restaurants were going to agree to buy the micro greens off them so is there anyone from THI California who can give me an update because that's near five six months ago now Because what I'll give people an update. There's a ballpark, um, forty-three thousand dollars in the TPC account at the moment. So, you know, if it's five five thousand dollars for the equipment for the to expand the THI California project, then why not? You know, uh, they've got marketing already done, and and. Uh, a traffic area as well and um, you know the likes of that they could sell whatever it is say it's ten dollars forty ask ask the the people buying it do they want to round it up to eleven dollars it goes into a jar and the the change goes to the tvc you know most people want to round it up anyway you don't want to carry change around so you know, that the, there's always ways of selling things that can uh, benefit the TPC. Susan. Okay, um, I agree with everything that's been said mm -hmm. so far. It's been, it's really interesting that there's a lot that we can do. I have a kind of a little different um, avenue for getting more monthly donations in. Um, I, I follow several different um, groups and one of them is Edge of Wonder and I was listening to them this morning and they follow Q and they're starting to say, well, we really don't know for sure what's gonna really happen. And so I think in with some of these groups that are already starting to wonder, we've been told for so long what's, you know, what's supposed to happen and nothing's really happened yet. Um, that that um, I can actually contact these groups um, because they're they're very open to input from people and um, promote the TPC that way as just hey this is a way for the people to not wait on whatever else is may or may not happen but that just through this small small amount per month we we can make big changes. Absolutely, you know uh, we could take advantage of Q and on. QAnon in and of itself has been beneficial. Once you watch that video I recommend it, you'll see what I've been warning about. Yes. You know, I, I kept telling you about these factions. I know. When you started talking about that, about QAnon just being another faction program, my heart just sunk. Um, that's, yeah. Um, so definitely, I think we can... we can um, use that and 
get interest into the, let's just take let's just do this for the people because all of this other stuff is crazy Lee Bobby hey. Bobby yeah, Stevens no. spy <laughs> fine <laughs> You know, uh, I I agree. Uh, I'll I'll bring you in a minute, Lee. Um, okay. You know, uh, we've all waited again for two three years for Q. And and the example I'll give is, say Q decides along with Trump to arrest all five hundred and. 34 or 43 or whatever congressman you, you, you can arrest them all because they've all done something bad what happens next say they arrest a load of cia nsa and others what happens next nothing you know look at who trump brought in he fired one person and brought guiliani in you know he he was involved in 9 11 let's not forget and, and that's why we, the people, have to step in. There is no alternative. We've not provided an alternative. We just let them run roughshod all over us. Look at the stimulus bill. They'll argue and argue and argue for months. Because why? Because it's some money going to the people. But they didn't argue over the is Israel bill for $38 billion, did they? No, it just gets passed through. <laughs> That's why QAnon, to me, overall, is not going to provide what we need. We may want to see arrests, and great, but they're just going to replace it with other clowns because we've not provided, we've not made them accountable, and we've not provided a viable alternative. And this is what the TPC is all about, is, is the power goes back to the people, not them. They can do whatever they like. If we've got 30,000 in each state or more in the bigger states like so Texas and Florida and New York, they don't have the power anymore because we have the power to vote them all out and then we'll put our own people in and look after the country, which is what you're supposed to do as a, as a politician. You know, and then providing we don't corrupt ourselves, and some people do, you know, we can start building a country that we, we can be proud of for the grandchildren. Is that what we're facing currently, sitting back and waiting for, whether it's for Kim, whether it's for Trump, or whether it's for Q to do something. It's never worked before. What? Why do you think it's going to work now? It's not. And even if it does, we still have to build a people's movement where we keep them in check. So you've seen their old system collapse and everyone's exposing each other and you've all found out that this virtually every single organization is criminal and working against the people. Whether it's shopping, Amazon, or it's the government, or it's the agencies, or it's, or it's the universities, you've all heard it now, they're not working for us. They're working for themselves. So we have to create a group that works for ourselves. And if they don't like it, tough. What can they do? With, with mass numbers, they can't stop us. They can't. That's their biggest fear, is the people all coming together. That's why they've, they've attacked THI. It's not just about that I out certain people and intel and all this stuff. It's about what we're creating. A people's movement. They're terrified. Absolutely terrified. The, the guy in the State Department on the call told me that. So, that, it's our only way forward. However long it takes, it doesn't matter as long as we build it. The people will come because the people now are getting more and more fed up. And even the sleepers are waking up and thinking, this is not right. But then what alternative do they have? They don't, because we've not built it. 
Lee. Yeah, hi, Thomas. Um, <laughs> other than the cat finds, I was pondering on that after we talked uh, yesterday. Came up with a few ideas for people. Uh, a lot of people don't want to donate. You know, they're not sure where the money's going to go or whatever, but they're willing to work, you know, and do something. So some ideas that came to mind was uh, uh, set up a brat fry. Some of the things that other people do for fundraisers, uh, you could set up a brat fry, um, save the receipts for all the, the buns and brats and whatever you're going to sell. I know they do that at the store here during the summer. Every weekend, somebody's got a benefit brat fry there for some reason. People could do that. You just volunteering your time, you know, send the receipt to Thomas. He can reimburse you for the meat and the proceeds go to the People's Club. Same thing with bake sales. People love to cook in this group, um, especially Glenn. You could set up bake sales, same, same thing. Uh, raise money that way. Um, how about a garage sale? We've all got junk laying around that we don't use that we can sell. Have a garage sale and uh, send the proceeds to the People's Club. You know, you're probably going to throw it away anyways. Well, one man's junk is another man's treasure. So you could raise money that way. Um, and as far as what Holly was talking about, my idea was to save the money that we have in the People's Club at the moment because we really don't have that much, not enough to start a real rock solid business and keep it going. So we need to raise more funds. But in the meantime, rather than spending it on something that may or may not work, I suggested that we keep that fund there because the financial situation and the economic situation in the United States and all over the world is getting really bad right now. And we haven't felt the brunt of what's going to happen. It takes six months to a year for all the uh, mayhem to trickle down to the people and people are going to start having a problem making ends meet and I thought that those funds could be used to help the people in this group who have participated and been here you know and have given their time and effort and and help them out make sure that they have food on their table their kids have food uh, if they need help with rent I know it's not going to pay people's rent for a long period of time, but if we can help them for a month and then maybe something happens, just, you know, I know people have done that for me in the past. They borrowed me money and got my rent one more month down the road and I was able to get back on my feet. That's all it took. I think that the funds that we're all donating there should, should be used to help the people that need help in our group first before we go outside. And those are, and other than that, those are a few ideas that I came up with for people to raise money, or I can just raise the cat fines up to fifty dollars, and we can make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's all I have. Just wanted to share some of those ideas. Yeah, you know, um, we were only ever going to invest around five thousand dollars maximum if we got involved with the Cosmic Towers, but um, given the allegations certain people are making over money again, even though we're the most, well, actually we're not the most, we're the only transparent group on the internet of where the funds goes to. You know, apart from my Patreon, which uh, the members voted to keep it private, but it was, it was there for everyone to see initially. You know, um, and it's it's kind of sad, but I have to be careful now uh, of my own position. There's essentially what they're doing is they're trying everything to throw dirt at me and hope it sticks. And, you know, if suddenly, say, for whatever reason, Harold, we, you know, was one member offered Twenty thousand Canadian dollars, which is I think fifteen thousand uh, U.S. dollars. Another member offered fifteen thousand dollars to go towards the Cosmic Towers. Well, you know, if we invest thirty-five thousand, and we're waiting two or three months for Harold to deliver them, 
and then it gets to the border and Kushner and his FEMA clowns take take it away. You know, that then falls on to me, and which is what some people are trying to do. And that's why I've kind of pulled back from it. It's not against Harold. The towers do work, but there's a couple of issues with it that I think could be better resolved if he actually spoke to the Polish people that he was arguing with or if they were arguing with him. Um, and this is part of the problem. It's this divide and conquer and over and over again. You know, it's my idea, and you know. And I gave him um, an alternative um, because if you're going to send the bigger ones, it's going to have issues with the shipping. Um, and so one of the ideas I gave to him was uh, we, he, uh, they make them, but they put the wood in flat packs and then we can get one member to build it once we get a sale. And how Harold can then send over 30 of these water bottles and the crystals and just put them in and then tighten the screws up and then it gets shipped in America. So that was one way around the awkward issue of six and eight foot um, <laughs> uh, towers where you can come in flat packs. Where they make them anyway. And it's just a matter of one member or a group of members putting them together when there's a sale and then we order 20, 30 of the bottles of water and the crystals and just put it in and then ship it in the, inside the US. Uh, but, but he didn't come back to me, so we'll see. I just want to jump in this, Holly. I just want to jump in. Um, and I, I liked Michelle and Lee's ideas. Um, the, the garage sales and the bake sales and stuff, what might be a good place to have the business cards and where our TPC t-shirts um, and kind of talk about it a little bit to people when they're, they're shopping, kind of spread the word that way. Yep. You know, and this applies uh, not just to America, you know, this applies to Canada and there's people here from the UK as well. You can build the same thing up yourselves. You know, um, the TPC was set up initially for America uh, we can widen it to Canada, but we certainly can't widen it out across across the world. We just haven't got enough. And what we're looking for is THI to build up in each country and then build build it up. And then once you've got a number of members, you can all chip in and get others to chip in and then create a PayPal unless you've got one or 2,000 chipping in or at least 200 chipping in. There's no point in setting up a company because most of the most of your funds to set up the company are going to swallow the donations each month. That was the issue with THI Ireland. You know, Alan wanted to create a website and a company. I said, but well, you're not taking into account the cost to keep the company running. You need a licensed agent, which is just a, a license to print money because you don't do nothing. Um, and then you also need um, uh, website fees and all, all the other stuff. And, you know, the TPC uh, costs about uh, 19, 18, 1900 a year. Well, if you've only got six or seven members, that's a lot. You know, you're all putting a couple, two, three hundred dollars in just to cover, to keep the company uh, operating. Well, you know, if that's why I said don't do the website and don't do, um, don't set up uh, a company unless you've got the numbers to support it. You know, the TPC's got the numbers to support it, but individual state groups have got to be built up in numbers. You know, uh, THI uh, Texas became TPC Texas because they pulled some of their funds together and were able to do so. But if you've only got four or five in a state group, any donations you get in for that state is going to be swallowed by website fees and the corporation fees. So, Thomas, if I can interject something here real quick, just so you guys can see, we've created TPC Texas business cards. So that might cool. be something that we will be able to share with others. Yeah, fantastic. Hey, uh, 
if I could um, talk a little bit about the project I'm working on uh, with the TPC Texas. And it's just in the initial stages. But the plan is to find a, an area, and the area in, is ended up being, uh, it looks like East Houston. And um, I was inspired by a guy on uh, Twitter, but to um, do a cleanup program. Um, so I'm actually attending an African-American church with, with my neighbors. Um, she invited me because she said, if I want to help the community, I need to get to know them. So I've been doing that. And then <clears throat> what else I want to do is in my community, try to find another church or churches that will kind of partner with us to come up with a plan to do a cleanup in um, underprivileged neighborhoods. Um, and then I wanna raise funds by implementing basically like a $5 a month club or more um, and try to get funds going there. And um, so I have identified a guy in my community who's very, he does a lot of charity work. I haven't spoke, I haven't actually gotten to speak directly with the pastor of the church I'm attending yet. Um, he's got like five jobs, so, and it's a very, very small church. They don't even have an actual building there in a strip center. Um, but he's very awake because there's no masks required. He's mentioned the Illuminati. He's even mentioned, you know, the issues with kids. Um, and they are starting um, there. It's a, for young women and girls in that area. They want to mentor like 100 girls. Uh, some of the ideas are sponsoring them for additional education, do some GED training. Um, and so I went to the initial couple of meetings and we've got some follow up there. This guy I've identified in my community, he's also got his own charity. So I'm thinking somehow, you know, if we can, you know, send some funds both of their ways in order to help get the project that I wanna do underway. Um, but I just, it's kind of like one community adopting another community and showing up instead of protesting, show up and clean up, you know, let's do something. So I just um, wanted to share, uh, I don't have, you know, I don't have anything solid. I'm just working on, on getting the connections and identifying um, what part of Houston and that kind of thing. Cause I'm not familiar um, with those areas, I don't live there. Um, I have the pleasure of living in a planned community. So, you know, we got parks everywhere and it's, you know, my son rode his bike to school every day. So, you know, that's a whole different life than what they're leading. Um, I think, um, cause I have lots of ideas all the time about this, but in addition, you know, I want this to be an ongoing thing. Like initially, you know, do the cleanup and then look for, you know, if we can get enough donations, we may be able to fund a community coordinator that's in that area, you know, that I could work with. And, you know, if they come up with projects that we need funding for, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm focusing on church groups just because they're, they're good about stepping up and helping. Um, However, I'm <laughs> having an interesting experience going to this church, so it's very different than anything I've been to before. But, you know, it's interesting as well that I feel so comfortable there. Uh, I feel like I fit in, and uh, the pastor is this booming big man, and like he said, he's an alpha alpha male. He's big, he's got a deep voice, and, and I never fall asleep, so that's kind of... Uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna work out. I keep feeling like doors keep opening and so I'm just having patience and going with it. Good, thank you. Anyone else wanna chime in? Can anyone uh, hear me? Go ahead. Um, 
Well, one of the things I was thinking about, um, there was two things because uh, last year I'm actually um, thinking about doing a organic fuel business uh, here in New Zealand. So instead of having 91 premium or 98 or even diesel, uh, having a um, a solution where you have fuel that doesn't ruin the environment, but also at the same time um, providing services for repairing vehicles as well. But while you're doing that, um, um, in my f modem's firmware, I have a um, I, ha I have a couple of settings where I can set up a guest access, and once they set up, uh, once they accept my terms and conditions that I personally set, I um, it gives me an option to redirect them to a website. So at the moment, I've actually got it redirected to the People's Club website. So once they click OK, it redirects them and they get all that information there. So that was the first one of maybe promoting TPC and or that. And the second one was at the moment, I'm experimenting with a cheaper way to host a website, which is basing it rather than buying a domain, it's basing it um, on my public IP address. So um, at the moment, because I'm no expert at web design or anything like that, this is just experimenting. I have gotten the website to, uh, to be hosted just with a few lines of text. So maybe um, using a public IP address rather than paying yearly, annual yearly fees for a domain, maybe another alternative. So I just thought I'd uh, put that in there about websites and promotion. Good, great stuff. Thanks, Rob. Um, Thomas? Yes, Mark. Yeah, one and, of the and then, and then Bobby. One of the ideas that I was thinking about with going forward with TPC as we start developing and finding more people to donate is we might need to have these little vignettes of what we're doing and the people are, that are receiving the donations and how it's affecting them in a positive way. We might be able to have to show people so they can see that visually because some of us are a lot a lot of us are visual people and if we can actually see that where our money is going we'll be more inclined to put our money into that that's one of the thoughts that i had in relation because i know when you're starting out small way do the small stuff we do all the fundraising the activities we can to build up enough to get it going and as we get it going and we can take some of the funds start showing people how effective we are where where the money's going so that they they feel comfortable that their money is being wasted because i know like myself over the years i've put a lot of money into different organizations to find out that they've been siphoning it out the back door overpaying people with the new organizations all the directors are driving nice escalades or whatever fancy vehicle of the day is and that's where my money is going it's not going to somebody in need so if we can show besides just words and you know people listening to us on on speaker or whatever but show them visually that where their money is going we might be able to get get more people to come in and people that are involved to put out more than just a dollar might go for the five dollars or the ten dollars yeah my this thought. is uh i know uh, there was a collective gulp um when i did the forecast for 2020 and i said the TPC, uh, the THI may not complete the year. This was kind of the idea that the THI would phase out and we would do more uh, shows to do with the TPC rather than the THI. Um, and yet it's, it, it's a valid point. Of course, we had um, Robert Petula on uh, and we um, bought him the wheelchair he paid some of it back, but we, he wanted to pay all of it back. And I said, no. So we'll let him, we let him, the directors took a choice. We let him pay him two or three months, I think. And then we stopped it, you know, because it, that's the idea. So yeah. I, I know Robert uh, what, would want to come on and probably uh, at least one other member who's been helped in the past. Um, some of the others are in Team Bobby, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure they want, uh, want to promote it. But then you also have the issue that some people don't want you to know that they've been helped. Yeah, uh, and that's you know, the hard part. 
Uh, you know, that's the, and I get that, you know. Um, you know, uh, we had one member of uh, THI Texas, I think it was, who uh, was helped and then jumped ship to Team Bubba, you know. You can't help that, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's why I wanted to get uh, THI California to go and build that on that three acres and then we can go look what we've done. Yeah. You know, um, because it's always difficult when you're helping members as they may not want to admit that they've fallen on hard times, you know. Yeah. And, and again, that's something we all need to look at. Of uh, why is it uh, um, society uh, dictating that you have to frown on people who have fallen on hard times? Maybe that's something you can all ponder on after the show. What? Why are we doing that to each other? You know, if if we're in shit, then speak up. You know, it, yeah. it, it's not a failing. But you got to remember, society is setting us up to all fail. And at various times, we we we've all done well, uh, uh, or most of us maybe. Uh, but it, eventually the boom and the bust. Yeah. It always follows. And it just essentially is just wheat and chaff, a harvest and a loadout. And this time the harvest and the millionaires. Because the yeah. people have hardly got into, you know. And this is one of the things, yeah. that came, the few things that Kim and I disagreed on, uh, we just worried about the people having shortage of money. Mm -hmm. I said, the people have always been short of money, Kim. I said, but. You know, we have always got by. But they, the clowns, need fast volumes of money to keep going. This is why they're talking about defund the police. Why? So they can bring the robot armies. Next, it will be defund the military because they can't afford it. And then they'll bring the robot, robot army. And suddenly, all these clowns who think they're protected and they've got the golden ticket at Langley, uh, the NSA and all these, they're all going to get replaced by bots. Mm -hmm. That's what Robert David Steele told everyone. You, The people will become the surveillance, he said, and kind of masked it in a way, uh, oh, great, we're going to expose everyone. No, we're going to, we're going to expose ourselves. That's what they're talking about. That's what the AI is. That's why they want everyone on the phones, and that's what the 5G is mainly, you know, I know there's a lot of fear, other fears about 5G, but the issue is is to create sufficient bandwidth to get more and more people on the phone and they can collect more and more data and then the phones become the spies. They don't need to pay people to be spies. The phones are the spies. No. You know, and this is the way it's going. And so, you know, if people are struggling, then you're struggling. It's not a failure in life. Yeah, it's like people who try to cover up. They make a mistake and try to cover up because they won't admit they made a mistake. Yeah, and on those presentations, if people are saying they failed me in this way, and this group helped me, that's a real bonus for us. Yeah, I, I, I will look into that um, and see how many want to step forward that we've helped. So yep. One other idea I had was what related to people that are unemployed, say mechanics or other people that service vehicles uh, that are linked to to junkyards, whatever. Because I drive uh, one of those don't don't laugh. It's paid for vehicles and have all my life. By going into junkyards, I would get the parts that I needed, and parts took the thing apart carefully without destroying anything with the nuts and bolts and everything. And give it to the guy who runs the yard, and I get the part free. So, rounding up these parts to help each of us or other people that are uh, reach out to THI, we have uh, backyard mechanics, people that are set up their own little shops and backyards to help each other keep our vehicles going. Because as things slide deeper and deeper, and the more businesses close, with all these unemployed people that ha are in a service industry that can help other people. They can offer their services somewhere else on the side as an individual. 
for less or more and and what and, and if they involve are are involved with TPC a certain portion of what they earn or take or sell parts or use parts for goes to the TPC funding that's yep. one of the ideas I was kicking around yeah you know uh, if you can all even with that our own circle look, look at our connections in our family whether it's yep. parents whether it's siblings grandchildren whatever you know, they all go into social functions if mm -hmm. we're presenting a flyer and it's clear we have to get a flyer out. Uh, and also, uh, you know, people can download the copy of the designation unless it's approved that we are a 501c3. Uh, and, you know, it's got links on to the TPC stuff and the two videos explaining yep. where, where life has gone wrong for all of us. It's, it's all there in uh, TPC 1 and 2. That's how, how are we going to go forward? We cannot keep copying the same way and expecting different results. Yeah. And so this is a completely new way. Business cooperative, people cooperative, pe people not collecting businesses for the, their own mini empire. Now right. we're all going to share it. Yeah. That's what brought me into TPC in the first place is because you know, making donations when I can squirrel some together and I do a, a larger donation each time rather than a dollar a month is when I grew up in my community in the 50s and 60s, when somebody was doing something, everybody showed up. We could have the full basement poured and, and in one weekend and another long weekend, almost have the thing to standing frame with the whole community pitching in. Yeah, We never locked our doors. If somebody came to visit from a ways away because they couldn't get a hold of us because no phones, they would uh, make themselves food, whatever, leave what they had brought to share, and then a note and say, we'll see you later on the backside. So everybody shared, everybody helped each other as we're growing up. If we had extra food, whatever, we shared it with. Canning, you know, uh, relatives, friends got together and canned together. That's the community I grew up when I lived in Clearwater back in the 50s and 60s. And having a community that shares together and helps each other is is what i'd like to see in tpc that's what yeah. we're talking about helping each other helping hand to everybody else i'd love to see it return to that having my neighbor go over oh you're building a, a wall there can i help you so that sort of thing that's yeah. what I, why i joined up with tpc yeah it you know it's it's changing the mindset that's what yep. we're doing you know that's why i said the tpc is not about trust funds it never was it's and it's not necessarily about donations either because you have to change people's mindsets and the tpc is a teaching course for us all and we're all learning along the way myself included you know uh nothing's working for us anymore it's just not i miss the reason why people won't help each other now because it's everyone for themselves which is the way the system created that doesn't mean to say we have to follow it because i won't you know but we 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 forget how much of our lives that we compete against each other over every single item i've got longer hair i've got better shoes i've got but it just goes on and on and on and um, and it needs to step back and go, why are we doing that? You know, one of the worst things we, we've all done, yourself included, is we're competing with our own family. Better house, better car. I've got more money than you, et cetera, et cetera. Why do we do that to each other, even in our own family? You know, where, you know, there's people uh, on this call who have got family members who are millionaires and, and, and the, the other siblings are not as well off and they won't share it. Well, we have to stop doing that because in essence, that particular sibling is no different to the elites, whether it's Bezos, whether it's Trump. You know, does Trump need 440 million in his bank? No, nobody does. For every millionaire, there's tens of thousands who live in poverty. That's how the system currently works. You know, in essence, it's like the, the clock. 
you know, and you've got uh, Kate, you heard Kim talking about the front system and the back system. Well, the front system is what the people have. Well, that only goes to about three o'clock. The other nine hours goes out the back door and, to, in, and harvested by the select few. And so even in the portion of energy, which we label as money, going to three o'clock, you've got people who are millionaires, which means there's loads who haven't got enough. And what we're trying to do with the TPC is make that go from three o'clock to four o'clock to five o'clock all the way to midnight or noon. Because then everyone on the clock is sharing the flow of energy and it's going to go clockwise, harvesting. It goes anti-clockwise. It goes into the back system of the banking system and they just dole it all out amongst each other. Well, yeah, we and if we're to... physically able, but we share our, our abilities with each other. Yeah. Rather than charging. You know, my off time, my, my service to another human being would be what I know, I help them plan or whatever, because I'm not that ambulatory, but I, I've done a lot and know a lot. I can help people that way. If somebody is a mechanic, they can show you how to change a starter. Because, you know, starters wear out, uh, alternators wear out quite quickly in the northern climate. So if you have those abilities, you just help your neighbor with your abilities. That's how I grew up. We all, you know, that's what I'd like to see. And with TPC, I see that happening again. If we all band together and work together within TPC, that kind of community will be a reality again. Yeah. That's why I'm here. And you know, I thank you. you know, and, you know, and once we all learn to work with each other, which is not as easy as you've all found out, every one of you have had issues with state groups. You know, because everyone's fighting to be the one. Because the whole of life is a competition. Well, we have to stop doing that. It's, you can have healthy competition, but most of it's not. And we have to be cooperative, caring and sharing. That's all it takes. You know, there's no executive orders telling us not to care and share for each other. No, we do that to ourselves. And that's why if we change, their system collapses in and of itself. We don't have to use violence. We don't have to attack them or any of that. We just have to be better people. Where everyone's getting a fair portion. And once that clock starts going around beyond three o'clock, everyone will get their fair share. And once it gets to six and seven, we're taking loads of people out of poverty because suddenly we've got an extra four hours of energy and, and people off the streets. That's how it works. We have to make the energy money, which is energy flow in a clockwise. So it touches everyone. Currently it's just harvesting. And people are, uh, want to be millionaires. For every millionaire, you're, you're making thousands of others in poverty because there's not enough in the pot for multi-millionaires. It means others go without. Well, that's not right. And that's what we where we have to change up here, the way we think. What do we need? Not what we greed. And we've all done it competing to have better houses and cars and all that stuff. But where's it got us? All it's got us is in more debt, which is what the real middle class is. There is no middle class. It's debt. Because most people cannot afford to live that higher social standing. And so everything gets borrowed and then the bus comes in and the, and the, the interest rates go up and then suddenly you're underwater and then you've lost your home. It's not a coincidence. It's a deliberate program to harvest people. You know, suddenly when there's, uh, the economy goes down, like now, why do you think they've lowered the interest rate? Because they want more people to borrow. Because if you borrow, they leverage, <coughs> they leverage that borrowing times nine. 
So if you borrow a hundred dollars, they go and claim nine hundred off the Fed. If you borrow a hundred thousand, they go and borrow nine hundred thousand off the Fed. That's the mortgage scam. Because your signature is the credit; it's not a debit. You know, and and you know all these things that people talk about the birth certificates. It can't be paid out. It's not possible. You know, everyone's apart from Rob and a few others are all fifty or plus on this call. You know, you've got millions in that birth certificate account. Who's going to pay it out? And what use is it if everyone's got millions of dollars or millions of pounds? None. You know, just none. It's not going to work. You know, and this is where you have to be careful with the base uh, universal basic income because if we if we get put on that, then we're doomed as a species. I'm warning you, we're doomed. Go and watch Continuum. That was that's what happens. They'll give you credits and here's some food and here's some this and here's some that. And then suddenly, if you do something that they don't approve, there go your credits. With cash, you have power. That's why they want to eliminate it. Credit cards, you have none. Because tomorrow, they could decide we're not honouring it. You know, they told us in, uh, in America and the UK on January 1st, 2015, I put it in the show, in the event of an emergency, all your funds in the account belongs to the bank. But they didn't declare what type of emergency. Oh. So with cash, that's why we have to keep hold of it. You have power, because you can go and buy what you want, not what they are monitoring. That's why they want everyone on cards, so they can see who's doing what, when, where, and why. Steph. Howdy. <laughs> I have a few variables. Um, you know, Arizona, we're not a well-off state. <laughs> we're most we're either uh, retired or on minimum wage, etc. But I think one of the good assets about this region is that we're out there teaching, for sure. We are teaching. Um, this morning, I had a great opening up with a wholesale um, uh, floral wholesale business owner in South Phoenix. Long, good conversation. Um, Michael, Arizona's got these white ones we can give out. <laughs> we picked up a thousand today. So y'all just need to holler. And uh, we'll keep out of pocket, our own pockets, you know, we'll keep making up more. If the more that's out there, you know, I think Michelle mentioned the flyer potential too. Um, let's see, the t-shirts the haven't been going well. Uh, like they started out. They started out strong and then it kind of fizzled there. And I was thinking about, like Lee mentioned, the uh, cake sales again, you know, that kind of theme. But it also brings to mind, uh, if you get that website going for garage sales, you know, or auction formats. Um, there is also a way that we can help in our death. <laughs> You know, maybe living, we couldn't have really helped, but you know what? You got a lot over there, over here, uh, LOT um, or something, you know, can the TPC take that on if it's a handwritten note or something like that? Uh, yes, you know, um, one of the things we were talking about is um, I came up with the mortgage plan solution, which will be rerun again with some other solutions in an up and coming sh show. Um, you know, if uh, for argument's sake, we had lots of funds and we started paying off lower end mortgages, then, you know, we're, we're not saying that we own the house, but, you know, uh, you were helped out 
And so, um, to use a certain term that's just been uh, um, taken over, you're paying it forward. And so, you know, uh, you've got large estates, you know, and you've been helped along the way, you know, uh, a little portion in the will from all of us to go to the TPC, which helps pay forward for the future generations. Well, I know whenever I have donated, it's never any intention of earmarking at all. It's it's always for the say the three directors to collaborate and and you know go for. Is that another thing that maybe members need to know? Uh, generally, do, are they aware that that there's people that that want to specify versus those that no way don't worry or. I don't think I've ever heard anybody discuss that. Well, one of the ideas as it was going to grow is, you know, we, are, we haven't been asked too often for funds to go out. And they've fairly been obvious cases. And although one of them did get put out to a vote on the MeWe chat, eventually once it, uh, the trust funds were supposed to come out um, or we get higher donations, is it becomes a uh, people's vote. And so at the end of the month, uh, we, we would say allocate X amount for that month to go out. And then the, the members themselves would attend the Zoom call and all vote on what is the best ones to put forward, which ones will fund, which ones will hold back and which ones are not viable. So it becomes a member's choice not the directors, would it be in small, you know, unless it's a larger purpose, which is why I, I said uh, with the Harold, it's a larger purchase, um, which we were going to put forward five or $6,000 maximum. And that then became a member's choice. That's why I said it on the Zoom call with Harold. It's not my choice. It's not uh, Michelle's choice. It's not Holly's choice. It's a member's choice. So once it builds up, you decide. And also, uh, when you were making reference, which is another big plus, our own inner circles, um, you know, a lot of small businesses have the no soliciting sign on their door. But like, if you're in there and already in and engaged with them, they know you and that, you know, that's where you can uh, promote eat with more ease than just being a stranger off the street when their sign says no solicitation. Yeah. But, uh, you know, one thing I would uh, I think was somewhat past comment on the chat is um, perhaps we um, promote the TPC separate from the THI. Yeah. You know, because uh, people always look for excuses not to get involved in one thing or another. And some of our stuff to um, people who haven't listened over a long period of time is going to just blow their heads away. Um, and there's a lot of things that are triggering, and you've gone through the triggering each week uh, to make it easy. But, you know, listening to some of our stuff is going to tip people right off at the edge. And so that's why I kind of wanted it to kind of uh, separate in many ways. And so, you know, the discussion would not be about THI and the shows and not be about the TPC and, you know, what we've presented on the website and the designation letter and the fact that the directors are not getting paid until it reaches a fairly voluminous amount. And even then, the maximum is 50000 Well, it's oh. one, one reason why uh, AZ has the other card option, which is specific to your website, the People's Club, so that they can go see those two videos, mm. um, too. Um. Yeah. Maybe we have to, um, we can have the Think Different um, as the selling website, and we take all the THI stuff off of there altogether oh. and put that on another website. If people want to go and listen to it, fine. You know, um, but you know, the religious, some of the religious people struggle with our show. Um, 
the archives. <laughs> obviously, and then you know, some people don't believe in ETs, and there's elements of that, and then some people don't want to hear that their hospitals and police and judges are all corrupt. <laughs> you know, so it, we really need to separate that. Uh, because people will look for an avenue not to get involved because that's the way society pushes them along, you know, and they find out about THR and you want to listen, fine. But we're more interested now in, in what the TPC does, what it stands for, what is our uh, goals, what is our guidelines and what is our vision for we the people. That's the important thing. Well, lastly, um the gentleman I was speaking to this morning, um, I was very impressed and, and it was like we clicked off in our conversation. I guess certain clue words were indicated and he immediately pulled his mask down <laughs> as the owner and we continued the whole discussion maskless. Um, and then the other one is the other shop owner, one of my two employers, uh, she is in on THI and she doesn't know what to say, but she's watching and learning and listening. So. Good. And she's 23 years old. <laughs> yes. Um, over the past two years, I think in part to do with QAnon, um, the Facebook page in the younger brackets has started going up quite a bit. You know, I think that a lot of that's been helped by the Polish group. There's a lot of younger um, people from the Polish uh group that have joined and so we're bringing our average age down quite a bit good. which is good thank you uh bob that we have a bob stevens and a bobby stevens bob stevens has got his hand up and then if bobby yep. wants to chime in well it's me same thing i got two things going all right my phone is what has the camera okay all right I'm going to set this down, see if you can hear me. Can you hear me fine? Yes. All right, yeah. I was the one that said about the cards. If, uh, I don't think having THI on there is going to throw people off if they heard stuff and had been listening, like you just said. Maybe a, cure, a QR code that they could scan on the card that would take them straight to the donation page. Uh, anything to make it easy. Um, you know, the easier you make something, the more likely it gets done. Good idea. And of course, the I hope the donation page is where you can set it up as recur recurring. Well, I have to speak to Michael on that. He's the webmaster extraordinaire. So well, maybe we can get Michael in. I know he was on earlier um, after you. And he can speak to that. Um, as for the website part for Michael as well, I'm not a web. I have made websites for a small business, but it was just a few pages. I'm, I'm no expert with drag and drop, uh, like Wix.com, and then you pay to get their advertisement off there. It's, it's really cheap. But um, outside of that, for TPC.org, you know, if we put a slash and then the state and create that page just for the testimonials and what they're working on and updates. It doesn't have to be something that's updated every single week or labor intensive, but just that could then put it part of tpc.org that already exists and is being paid for anyway, if there's pages available. And it wouldn't have to be very many pages deep. So it could be tpc, well, the peoplesclub.org slash Texas, keep you, you know, and yeah, and that, then their their stuff. Yeah, that was something we we're going to do further down the line. You know, obviously, if, uh, initially, um, we were talking about the trust funds coming in, and once the trust funds come in, then the website goes out, and then uh, the states would all be split up where they created the TPC, whatever state rather than THI ends when the trust funds come out. That was the idea. Uh, and so that then any companies being set up would then be funded by the TPC, uh, including the website. Um, 
so it's not coming out of the people's pocket. Right. Uh, now, obviously, certain things have changed, or well, for now they have anyway. Um, unless someone um, does McFly on Kim's head and wakes it up a bit, uh, and so eventually, the, the idea of the TBC is is and um, why we did it in state groups is for argument's sake the receipt that I received of 18.311 million for the TPC, we could take half of that and split it up between the states who are ready. And so then the funding is going to that state in equal measure. And then the other half, we would look at various projects. But that was the initial funding. That was only part one of the funding. There would, there would be, if we uh, looked after the money properly, um, which we will, uh, then we can apply for a second round of funding for some of the bigger projects, the TBC villages and stuff like that. That was the idea. Now, I'm just saying this single, simple page of, like, like he said, something visual of people that have been helped as we move forward. If not, um, there could even be, as part of that QR code when you do a donation, it's, you know, you always want to call to action and collect, I'm not trying to be a data miner, but to get their email just so we can send them, uh, say, a newsletter that does update. This is what's happening with the project in uh, California. You know, this is how the money's being spent. It's working and so on, you know, just updates. So if, if not the website, then maybe a, a newsletter. And it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be an every week thing, maybe once a month, you know, as needed. <clears throat> what I really wanted to discuss was this uh, well, where's my camera? Sorry. Was this that I came up with is a structure. And the reason being, I'm going to read from here because I, I'll get off my mind's going 10 directions. I'll just read from here. I'm not great at doing it, so forgive me, but you'll get the point. The point of me trying to come up with a structure was I was the one that came up with the idea for eBay. There's on average is eight to $900 worth of just everything laying around people's homes, old phones, uh, old electronics, broken electronics, which sell fast. Electronics are the fastest selling category broken or, or anything, uh, people buying the repair, you know, uh, toys, Legos. I, I can point around this room and show you. That's what I do. Now, I did have my own car stereo business, brick and mortar, and I just got tired of dealing with people. They were getting worse and worse. But like Legos and computers, and I have set up for pictures and my computer, you know, all my shipping stuff. That's what I do every day. So I had the suggestion of the eBay thing. I'm not trying to push anything online. We want to do things in person, of course, but just for the fundraising. Each member in THI has things in their home that they're not using that they can get rid of. Um, unfortunately, especially with this crap going on, doing sales in person isn't going to be near as easy as selling it online, you know. What the, what the holdup is, most people, the, the learning curve is the shipping. Um, listing and shipping. Listing straightforward now on your phone is so easy. Um, and again, I know what we think about our phones but and what convenience does, but it is a way to get funds going. Everybody has it. So in the whole group, if everybody listed on one, uh, it could be for that state or people could do it individually. Ideally, if everybody listed on, on one for the TPC and when it sells, the person that has possession of it would have to ship it, of course. It doesn't make sense to ship a $10 item, cost $8 to ship it and then ship it again, of course. So if people would take on that responsibility that they are gonna ship it in a timely professional manner when it sells, you know, um, one person with access to that eBay account could be listed. Unfortunately, 
they still haven't come up with a, a way to, like if I wanted to hire someone to do just listing, they have to have access to my whole account. That's not cool. You know, it's PayPal and everything. Uh, so no, um, other platforms, you can get someone else to do the listing, give them a, a limited access. So that was the hang up when I had that idea before. Then I had a lot of things happen, bills mysteriously doubling up, not being paid that were paid. I go on and on. Right then it was some of the most I've ever gone through. Not to mention my sister in and out of a place six times, probably walking. But uh, anyways, not here to talk about that. The, the idea of the eBay, what frustrated me is because I at the time couldn't move forward with it, even though you said go ahead. It stopped um, because Alan was involved with the the business group, and he's gone. Everything stopped. Okay, so this idea is to create an underpinning structure that allows for our, our energy to flow inward to train leaders. Or it can also train outward to train certain parts, departments of a business because every business has about six essential functions. If you, if you can imagine, I'm gonna read from this and not go too much on the fly because I'll get off subject. But if you can imagine each of these six circles are a department that needs to be done. Sales and marketing, production, so on. The center is the leader of the project. And you see they're all together. They all rely on each other. The reason for the number six I'll go into and it ends up being seven. But I'm gonna read this if that's okay. I'm not great at doing this. Uh, all right, it says we are here. We are in the here and now. We all want to create projects and uh, that directly put people in homes, lift people from poverty. This thing's echoing, it's driving me nuts. Teach and so on, lift humanity and lift humanity. Well, with direct and substantial funding from the trust or whatever source doing that and doing that in the form of working charities and boutique and niche projects isn't a problem. Without big funding, it's a whole different story. Uh, so, however, in the meantime, uh, in the here and now, given the situation today, how do we get uh, there from here as quickly as possible? Also, how do we hold any ground gain uh, when challenges and attacks present themselves, which they constantly will? And that's just part of any project or business. There's going to be challenges. If a leader of the team member leaves or falls out, falls ill, whatever, how do we support that project and prevent it from falling apart? Our life force energy, our creativity, efforts, time spent, labor, every bit of it has value. And we do not want to lose that when issues and challenges arise. Challenges in any project or business are going to and always be something you can count on. Um, you can count on, on the challenges, that's for sure and change itself. It's the two things you can count on. So what structure could we underpin every collective project and business we form and develop? See the dark, they have their programs, right? Unfortunately, they abuse each other and, and do the MK Mind Ultra, but that assures that even when they don't agree, they all collectively will still, they're gonna do what they're told. You know what I mean? So they continue to move forward and things don't fall apart when one person falls out. On the good side, we're caring and, and, and giving people, you know, one person out of three of a project falls out, that, that's 30%, you know, and, and the building's gonna collapse with a third of it missing. So the goal was to make a, a solution that was structured and repeatable, which creates stability. You want it to be uh, strong, flexible, and it can adapt to the needs of each of the projects and businesses um, a good example and something that clicked in my mind and made me see this was I saw a documentary about trees and the mother tree 
all was sharing uh, not only roots and systems and such, but actually a, a third party like moss and, and things like that in the ground. And they were doing, uh, seeing how they communicate and they literally communicate to each other. They share nutrients, and, but the mother tree, the big tree does not nurture another tree just like her right underneath her, of course, right? But if there's a sapling on, it could be, you wouldn't believe how far away. And if it's not getting enough water, it's not getting enough sunlight, she's giving it life force energy. And it's amazing. Uh, once I saw that and saw how that was all woven together and they all supported each other and that gave stability, um, it made me really see this. All right. So you want it to be lean and efficient, uh, makes the best use of the least amount of resources. You know, given where we're at right now, limited resources. And that's always the case with any business, even when you have funding. Um, unfortunately, like with the dark, they have all the money and they had all the access to the trust and what they do, squander it, waste it, you know. Um, so it'll, it, I, it may be a good thing to have to start off with limited funding because it'll teach all the project leaders to be really frugal and lean so it may be a blessing. Um, but anyways, lean and efficient makes the best use of the least amount of resources. That was the biggest thing. By this, I mean every business needs to, to limit expense, but you can limit yourself into failing as well by not having enough people, et cetera, or resources. I did that with the businesses. I, I, I limited, I was squeezing so much that I squeezed it to death. This is the concept that rose, um, sorry. This is the concept that rose out of all of that and much more. I'm keeping it simple here today just to introduce this idea. And if it's something we want to move forward with implementing, I can discuss everything in much greater detail in future calls. So I'm going to keep this simple. We'll be here forever. Uh, keys as a reminder, the focus is efficiency and stability. Stability, stability, so things don't fall apart and all that effort's wasted. The objective is get as many people involved and active as possible in the most timely manner possible. Get as many projects and businesses and or businesses up and running in a stable format cooperatively, of course, sharing talent throughout the structure. This creates the stability. And you can see that's their way, which we all know was the pyramid. Uh, we need the opposite of what core pirates are. They're based on loops, feedback loops, information loops, need to know and paywalls. The structure we're gonna, I would see us doing, we want a structure that encourages flow, outward giving and growth, stability through sharing and supporting each other, no loops and collection bins for the few at the top of the pyramid. We want a structure based on sharing and support, energy flow, which strengthens each part of the structure where needed. Then giving outwardly to our communities once we're in that position to be able to do so. Then giving outwardly to our communities and, and, and the all as we lift up and show them the way. I'm sorry again, I'm not great at presenting guys. All right, so y'all saw the structure. So you have it in your mind. All right, what I'm calling this right now is an element which is made up of seven parts. Each part, the circles, represent a department or one of the key functions or parts of any project. Each part or department, so it's a part, contains as, as many atoms, which is us, our greatest resource. Um, it, it contains as many atoms as needed, as many of us as needed in each one of these circles because each department's gonna need so many people. Each business project's gonna be different, so it's very malleable. And this doesn't dictate how many people you have or put in a department. This is an underpinning structure. This is, doesn't dictate anything for any individual project. Ideally though, you want at least three per department. Um, reason being, I won't go off, I'll read, <laughs> sorry. The reason behind the seven parts is twofold. Simply, the hexagon is one of the most efficient structures in nature. 
uh, honeycomb in the bees hive, we all know, on and on. Uh, it tends to be the natural sh shape of self-organizing things. And that's what the TPC should be, right? Self-organizing. Uh, even hot lava, as it cools, you can see it. It, it forms that shape. It's, it, it just is because when those molecules come together, six or seven fit a certain way, and that's the shape that is. You know? Why re reinvent the wheel, right? Go with the flow. The whole thing is getting our energy put in, built up, and allowing it to go out to others eventually. Um, anyways, it's an uh, efficient shape. Of oh, the operational reason of seven was chosen because you have one leader in the middle of the project and then six supporting roles or departments. Um, that's for stability, because if you only have three, let's say, and there was only four in that picture, what happens is what I just said is when one goes away, that's a third of the building and the building collapses. So your stability is not there. That's the reason to go to two sets of three, which makes it six. And then you have the leader in the middle. All these six are supporting that leader. Um, and I wanna say in any business, it doesn't matter if you're making tacos, cars, nuclear, power plant, whatever you're doing, there's always going to be basically six departments that need to exist. And people who are in accounting, let's say, are, they're in here, and they're the accountant, they don't care if they're doing accounting for a, a sandwich shop, they don't care if they're doing it for an internet company, you know, they just do accounting. So imagine if you could duplicate this in each department training, right? And then outward, the people trained can go form another element. And then you could put the leader in the middle. Absolutely. Because the biggest thing is usually the people with the ideas aren't business people. No. You know, the creative people, right? So if you put what they need around them, yeah, um, I, they can I'm, be successful. I'm, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a pity you were not involved in the uh, business group. Um, I'm just, con just conscious of time uh, and I need to get Roger in and also Ramona in. Um, okay. Well, a couple of things uh, is some of that, uh, what you were describing um, is essentially what we, the guidelines put out that Alan was supposed to deliver with the business team of the TPC3. We did touch on uh, the structure uh, which is we call it the flower of life of each department connecting on on the, you have the center and then you have six around it. Alan actually did um, a presentation on that that was in TPC2. And so it's similar, but you what you've discussed is TPC3. We, we, we laid out the vision. I showed how how it could work and how how to plan it and in part two. And part three was the structure, which Alan, uh, Liam, Mark, and Lawrence, and then I added Emma into it, was supposed to deliver. So maybe uh, we can start that up again, uh, remove Alan. Um, well, Alan's left or stepping back, whatever he has decided to uh, state today. So we can go forward with that and produce that TPC3, which is important because it's talking about what you, you're talking about is the whole structure. You know, uh, I wouldn't stick with the six. I would ask you to look at three, six, and nine. The three are the people that are involved in it. The six is the shape and the structure, and the nine is the TPC. It's the same um, banking system that I um developed and created and pushed over to Kim. And Kim was talking about the Tesla. Um, that's That was the new system that I came up with uh, and passed on to Kim to deliver and put as part of the quantum system because it, it creates the flow, the 369. Now, unfortunately, Kim wanted to add another number in and that's why the transfers will not work because it's not creating a flow. Tesla said, once you understand 369 and it's a pattern, it always repeats. So yep. 
because once it resonates. Yeah, and then the what you were discussing earlier, the cooperative, uh, and uh, you know what we'd said, uh, I'd said in TPC two is that all staff share, and, and you're talking about the, them becoming the teachers, which is what the TPC is all about. And it's not about the staff sharing the bonuses. It's about the staff sharing each other's tasks. So if someone's off, someone can fill in, you know. Right. Uh, and so there's, again, there's a forward flow, you know, instead of uh, everyone having to fill in extra, you know, and nobody really knows each other's job. Well, I'm not doing that job because you're earning more than me. Uh, we've all heard it. Well, yeah. If we're sharing the wages, no matter what the skill sets, and everyone's getting equal, then there's nothing stopping a TPC teacher to go into that company that we change from a, a corporate to a cooperative and get them to all learn each other's jobs. And let me make a suggestion there. Yeah. Is imagine that whole structure you can yeah. make, we could make a whole element that's just trainers. Yeah. And yeah. Well, so you can put a leader the, in, yeah. a new leader that's never ran a, a project, say they cross train through each department. Absolutely. And then they come out the center. Yeah. Right. Or if someone leaves from another element, another project, then you need the accountant or you need the inventory guy or you need the production guy, then they can just produce one and send them to the other project. Exactly. What's great about the teachers is we've got so many retired people with all these skills, just like other people were saying, and they could be active right now if we if we make this structure, and, yeah. And and we can do it remotely, just like this. Yeah. There's people that have done accounting. There's people that have done inventory. There's people that have done production jobs, and they could teach. You know, we could make this form with teachers right now, just yeah. with what we have. Yeah. We well, have to wait for their yeah. project. Yeah. Essentially, uh, that first outer circle would be, um, for argument's sake, security, accountancy, legal, all the things that would protect the TBC. And then you would have circles connected to that. So that's your structure, which mm -hmm. is about six or seven. Uh, and then the petals that come off it, we, we, we were talking about the flower of life, are companies that we've taken over and now glued onto the original structure, which you've got there, and they're all protected. They, they, we have accountants that will not only work for the TPC, the main TPC, but the accountants will also work for the TPC states as well. Right. And so then you're creating another uh, structure, and then there'll be another one where we're bringing in companies who are currently core pirates. You know, they've seen that our companies work, and right. they, they want to become part of it. And so that's your next circle. And that, that's where we were going with the videos. So yes, uh, and yes. And then you get several of these together. And once there's a few clusters, there's strength there. So when the attacks come, because these businesses we're replacing, not going to want us there. So when they attack, we'll be we strong. And, and just like you said, if there's three in each department, three people. There's either three eight hour shifts if it's an emergency and say they're, say that element is uh putting out uh, um needed supplies of after an emergency or something it's in 24-hour things so three eight-hour shifts or you have three people and they one doesn't show up and the other one covers and one's in training you know there's always training is the key yeah you know always uh, bringing people in and the so. biggest thing new people ask and one of the first things i asked when i came in to thi was what can i do to help and everybody hates that question, but that is what people want to do. They want to do, they want to help. Yeah. And right now, no funding, we need no funding to set up a mock business. No. Why couldn't we set up a mock business and let them go through the paces yeah. and show the weaknesses and let them work on it? Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, start setting these up okay. in each state. Yeah. You well, know, that know. was what, what one of the idea, you know, the four day week that I um, came up with in TBC2 and Liam uh, implemented it. And I said, now the next stage is, you know, staff are, are working a day less for the same pay and actually more in some cases. Um, 
and maybe once a month or once every week you would get members of staff who are off on the Friday or Monday or whatever other day where they're only working four days is that they would go out uh, once a month each member of staff and go and speak to the other corporate companies in the region and go this is why we're working would you like to come on board and go and teach into those uh, into your own community and so again you're creating the next flower of life pattern and it just keeps growing mm -hmm. so that, that, that was the, the, the idea so uh, thanks for that uh, Ramona I need to bring you in on did you get around to the CBD call um, and also what we may need to look at as well is that you've mentioned today about government grants because if we get government grants we're taken off the clouds for every government grant because the, only the clowns get it and we've got to stop that flow and, and so I know Ramona's involved in government grants and is earnest in THI Arizona has done some of it and maybe some others want to learn it and get involved in it whereby we have a grant specialist which would be a commission basis whereby if you get grants for, for argument say TBC Texas uh, that the person who wrote out the grant and then they got it will get then get paid a commission based on whatever the TBC Texas got and so we can create another position where once the THI states get ready you can apply for government grants you would go to that grant person and then they would they would do uh, be skilled in that and and how to apply for it and uh, there will be a commit on a commission basis and then the grant goes to whichever state is applied for it so that's another job we could employ people on a commission only basis I don't know whether Ramon is here. Is she on mute? Or is she not here? Can't see it. Right, we'll go with Roger then. Hi, Roger. You've had a busy Hi. day. Five hours of meetings and workshops. So, yeah, I haven't eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it's Kevin and Ed update. Um, so what's going on in Canada is Kevinet is forming the Republic of Canada. Yeah. The reason we have to do this is we have an illegitimate government and it's run by the Crown through the governor and lieutenant governors and the Privy Councils. We can vote for who we want, but um, they really have no influence. They essentially pledge allegiance to the Crown when they take office. Um, and we have the illusion of democracy in this country. Um, that has been taken away with the public health acts. The public health acts have actually um, eliminated the charter of rights and freedoms that's in the Canada Act, which they call a constitution, but which isn't. So politically, um, for Canadians to start to remedy what's going on, we're not gonna get there through the Admiralty Courts, and we're not gonna get there through the political structure like you can in America. You have a constitutional republic. You have constitutional sheriffs in your counties. We're probably the most powerful law agency you have. They can deputize police. You can form 12 person juries. You can issue laws and you can issue warrants and you can go after who you want if you have um, an honest constitutional sheriff in your county and they're willing to work with you. Kevin, Actually, when he teaches common law and common law assemblies in America, they invite the county sheriffs to the workshops and they understand this. So um, I'm now the convener of a common law assembly. <laughs> Talk about jumping in the deep end. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, we've got about 15 people signed up. And I, I mean, I'm not gonna go through five hours of download today. That's a lot of information. And I know we've been on this call a while. But essentially, Kevin's doing exactly what Thomas talked about. We're building a separate structure, the Republic of Kanata, that runs in parallel with Canada. One of the reasons people up here won't change their habits and won't push back is there's nowhere to go. So fear kicks in. What kind of community is going to support me? 
how do I stand up for my rights? How do I protect myself in, step, in admiralty law courts that we know are corrupt? Mm -hmm. And there's no alternative. We don't have a constitution. We don't have constitutional sheriffs like you do in America. Um, we're not empowered. But that doesn't mean to say the common law isn't legitimate. It's the highest law of the land since before the Magna Carta. Um, and so by forming, all you need is 12 people. We've signed a charter. We've made a pledge to the Republic of Canada. I did that today. Um, and we're going to start meeting weekly. We have a convener chair facilitator, which is myself, a co-convener to support me. We have a secretary, treasurer. We've got three um, uh, subcommittees now, knowledge. So there's a hell of a lot of teaching to be done. Once we teach people what freedom is and how to be free, I got to start bringing all the Thomas's material <laughs> and teach them about co-ops and the cooperative movement. So we have people here that are hungry for this. I can bring in the videos from Thomas when the time is right, as I build the relationship. The cooperative model is very much a part of what these common law groups are about. So it, 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 there's a lot of synergy in there. Um, and we're also going to elect, and, and Kevin's going to train sheriffs, which gives us enforcement capacity. Now, it's not all going to take off in a hurry. Um, you know, we're very small right now in number. There's about 100, I think he said there's about 2,000 people involved in these assemblies now across Canada. Um, so it's growing, the movement's growing. We know there is a pent up desire in the Canadian population to go down this path. And because it, 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 it's so in line with the people's club, the cooperative business models, and the people I was talking today, when we're talking about caring and sharing, forming communities, supporting each other, everybody's on the same page. What the common law assemblies give us is the teeth. Remember we said we don't have enforcement? Yes, we do, and you do in America. You have a constitutional republic. You have constitutional sheriffs. You can invite them into THI now if they're willing, and you can engage them, and you can form your own 12-person assembly. You can start issuing laws. So this is being shown to a police officer, and I'm just showing you the piece of paper. The, the, the National Council of Common Law and Assemblies in Canada issued a law and they have made it a crime to impose masking, social distancing, quarantines, mandatory testing and vaccinating in the Republic of Canada. And offenders will be charged and prosecuted in common law courts. Somebody showed this to a police officer on Vancouver Island and he read it and he looked at law behind it and he gave it back to them and said, yep, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. That's legit. These things are real. What we don't have is numbers. So that's what's ongoing. Um, now, we think we've had clown problems. Um, there were two groups set up, Vancouver and the one I'm in, in the last two weeks. And already the Vancouver one's been destroyed. There's four people left. And there were six people ran like the wind out of our group once the funny business started. Um, so what Kevin said today, BC has pretty much been sold to the Chinese. Um, they're actually pulling the Canadian military out of BC. I was shocked when he told me that. He said, yeah, they're actually pulling garrisons out of BC, moving them back to Eastern Canada. He said that the Chinese own British Columbia, and the reason they come in so fast to stop people like us forming is because of that heavy Chinese influence. So he's had eight groups up in BC, all bar two have been destroyed so far. They've all been blown up from the inside. Um, the good news is, because of the knowledge I've gained from THI and Thomas and all the work we've done with THI, we're, I'm very well aware, Kevin's very well aware, um, and we had some good conversations today about how we're going to protect the group, security, prevent infiltration, and, you know, I'm encouraging them to come to me, Lee, so we can adopt the kind of processes we adopted in THI Canada to protect ourselves, um, and, you know, start really working on intuition and trusting that and not letting these people come into the group and disrupt us. So this is a long journey. This isn't gonna happen overnight. Um, I'm determined that this group will not be blown up from the inside. So they didn't get around us in THI. They're not gonna get around us in this, I'm determined. Um, but the good news is we have a good group of people. Everybody is now excited. Um, we're now learning that we do have the tools and we do have the power, it rests with us. One of the great things he said today, people said to him, well, when they put out orders for, to wear masks, 
and they make the mandatory, what are we supposed to do? And he said, well, what makes a law mandatory? It's because you obey it. He said, if you don't obey it, there is no law, it's just words. So he said, if you engage police officers and whoever it is, and you show them this law, and you talk to them about the common law, and you let them know they're personally liable, and we'll arrest them if we need to. Um, he said, so far, most of the police have dealt with, not in this specific instance, but in other instances, will always back down. They've never, in 18 years, he's never been sued, and the police have always backed down. So he's a living testament that this stuff works and that all we have to do is basically have the balls to stand up for ourselves and be sovereign. Sovereign, as you guys in America know, you only have freedom if you go and take it. It will never be given to you. You have to stand up and say yes, and you have to work it. You know, in THI, we've already got the model. We've got National Canada. You guys have got state groups. You've already got 12 people that can form a jury in your own jurisdiction and talk to your local county sheriff. You can already start building out the enforcement if you know what to do and how to do it. Um, building the cooperative business model and some of the great stuff you guys are talking about, think about the power of bringing those together. So, you know, I'm not pitching THI a big way yet with the common law assemblies. I've got to get trusted. I've got to get to know people. Kevin and I are coming together now. I've seen him three times. I spent five hours sat next to him today. And the funny thing is his family come from an area close to where I come from in England, which was a big surprise. Um, and so we've really connected. And so I want to build that relationship. And at some point, Tommy, and if other people want to do this, I want to talk to him about bringing him into Zoom calls and start talking to everybody about how do you set up your own common law assembly? How does that empower you? And how can we connect that now with the People's Club so that we have the business, the cooperative model, the communities of caring and sharing, but we also have the power of the common law and constitutional sheriffs who can actually deputize your mm -hmm. if yep. you need it. Uh, Absolutely. It. <laughs> it's, um, it then creates um, empowerment, which we all lack in many ways. We, we yeah. don't recognize our own power. Yeah. Um, and you know, people are frightened to uh, say certain things. Uh, the recent example is when I did a piece on Kim, and suddenly everyone spoke what they wanted to say. You know, uh, uh, and that's an, an example it is, is why it's important, and I would like to see all five come under the People's Club. You can still keep the Republic of Kanata and, and, and Anabon rights and all that stuff. But if we get all those five groups together under the People's Club, and the reason it is, is the People's Club is not just about common law, it's not about business, it's not about trust, it's a teaching program and, a, and an empowerment program. And suddenly you're building by sheer numbers security. So, you know, if there's only a group of 12, it can be attacked. But if there's a group of 12,000, it's not as easy to do, and that's right. all it takes, you know. And you, you, you've got Kevin doing his stuff, albeit in Canada, uh, and John DeRash doing his stuff in America. But that doesn't mean to say that they don't cross over. And even Anna von writes, you know, let's pull the people together under the People's Club, all three groups that are involved in the law side. And then you would have a People's Club law side, which then plays into what Bobby was talking about suddenly you've got security for the TPC because you've got a load of people in three separate groups who are, are now becoming the enforcement in block. And so that then plays into the People's Club because now in those six categories, you, you need security, you need enforcement, you need empowerment and protection. You know, And so that would be uh, another reason for everyone to come forward. And then, you know, the more people that are joining in these committees, we can set up a, a gardening committee again. We can set up website committees again uh, and the business team again. Just, and so I'll make it grow. Yeah. Just to give you one story quickly that shows the power of this. One of the groups in Eastern Canada, I'm not sure if it was Nova Scotia or wherever, uh, one of the folks on it, the Child Protection Services, came around to his home at night to take the children. I don't know the full story, but they came to take the children. 
Um, they have a communication tree, an urgent reaction network, which is similar to the Minutemen in America. Within less than 20 minutes, they had, I don't know, 12, 15, 20 people shop his home. They took these common law um, statements, they put it in front of the police officers and social services, and they backed down and left, and the children were still safe. Now, I don't know what's going to come out of that, um, but, you know, with that kind of support, you can see these um, parasites off. <laughs> Um, I don't know that's the end of the story in this case because that they, they won that first night and, and the uh, authorities backed down when the urgent reaction network showed up and explained the common law to them and told them that they will be arrested and they will be charged by a common law court so you can go home now or we'll arrest you um, and the authorities backed off and left so you know I don't know when this played out but this is real. Um, and I don't know what might the outcomes of that might be. I'm sure the authority is going to come back at them. I don't know. But that was a story he shared with us today um, to help us understand that when you come together and you support each other and you stand on the truth and natural law, this is real and the authorities know it and they're afraid of it and they will back down yeah. unless they're totally corrupt, which could be true. Yeah, well, look at um, what happened with the lockdown. Suddenly there was demonstrations in May and then it was backed off. Yeah. You know, if the, the people that kept going instead of being sidetracked with Black Lives Matter, which is another program, it's not there to help black people, never was, um, then we would not be on uh, mask alert. You know, uh, and that's all it takes. And, and this is why we have to build the numbers up. It's not just the donations. We have to build the numbers up and get people uh, brought up to speed what we're all about. Because, you know, it benefits everybody. That's the, that's the beauty of it, the simplicity of it. It's designed to benefit everybody, no matter what field or walk of life you're in. Um, and it just takes numbers. That's all it takes. You know, politically, like I said, 20, 30,000 in 40 of the 50 states, our candidates, if we put candidates forward, are going to get selected. And that's the long-term goal of the TPC, where we roll the cooperative model into government, whereby there's no need for parties is are you going to act, if, you, if you're a TPC candidate, are you going to act for and by the people? And if you don't, we're going to vote you out. There's no need to be affiliated to parties. Certainly not theirs anyway. It's two sides of the same coin. But um, Vancouver um, is a troubled area. Yeah. And there's a lot of fun and games that goes on there. Uh, people have no idea. Uh, the frequencies there uh, uh, are not good because of the connections to Victoria Island and some of the other species that are below there, and also Whidley Bay, SSP. And then you have the Chinese problem, yeah. which has nothing to do with the Chinese government and everything to do with Rothschilds and uh, fake Chinese elders and all the other mafia and that type of stuff. But also uh, what's been uh, made clear today is that QAnon's been run out of Vancouver under the PSYOP. Wow. I had no idea of that. I watched that link you sent me. It's been run out of Vancouver. And that doesn't mean to say that QAnon's all rubbish, but it's not because the a lot of it is faction. This is what I kept warning of the factions. Don't think because they're out in person X that they're doing it for you and I, they're not. The only show that's <clears throat> not connected to any organization is THI. And that, I wish that wasn't the case, but it is. All the others, the Able Dangers, X-22, Sergeant Report, Veterans Today, uh, Jason Goodman, uh, the AIM, uh, AIM for Truth, Truth Cat uh, Radio are all working for factions, all of them. That's not to say you're not going to get disclosure, as you will, 
but please don't make the mistake of thinking they're for and by the people because they're not. And, and as it, I kind of been hinting at, and neither is Q. When they were celebrating, they hung themselves for THI members when they were celebrating BlackRock taking over the Fed. BlackRock, Black Star, Black Trust, Black Sun, Black Dragons, same thing. It's it, the reason why they're in Vancouver is you've got the Black Dragon North America, which includes Canada, and you've got the Black Dragon in China. It's the same group. And so we, uh, we have to be careful. Yeah, that makes sense because I went to a demonstration, just checked it out the other week, and there were it was a big Q Trump thing at the end of the day. It, you know, it started off people were going there for the right reasons, and then whoever got the stage started yelling Trump, and there were people standing around in Q T-shirts. And I'm thinking, okay, this has not got anything to do with Vancouver, but maybe yeah. it does. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, Kim told Alan on a private call. Trump's a good guy, but he's also a Black Sun member. Does that really equate? I don't think so. Just, you know, and, and this is why I kept warning Kim um, as far back as December. Well, you know, I, I was calling Trump out in Cosmic Voice, the ones who've been with me all the time. You know, and Kim was saying this, 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 and this, and I kind of went along with it a bit, but then I'm seeing too much evidence and I said this to her, you know, I wanted her to cut Trump off in December 2018 when I'd been here about four months. Why? Because he'd done nothing for her. Never mind the people, nothing. You know, um, Kim has been struggling with, had been struggling with funds until I stepped in, even when she was with the boyfriend handler and was a handler as she found out for herself. I said, you're not telling me, Kim, that he, he can't find a government slush fund of which there's bundles of them and put you down as an employee, as a, an advisor and pay you $3,000 a month so you're not struggling. Or take $3,000 out of his own pocket, which is like loose change to him, and fund it until the trust funds come out. No, we didn't, you know. About 20 times we got ready uh, for Trump to turn up, and 20 times he didn't. He's played that, in my opinion, and that annoys me, despite what Kim's done. That's personal, but on a work level, that annoys me no end. And he's done nothing, all the work. I spent over a 1,000 a hours working on new programs, new way to do things, how to fix the American government and all the departments, tax, disaster relief, you name it, for no pay. And he, he hasn't implemented one, not one. The sovereignty, you know, it's four years uh, next January. You know, we're only three months away. Kim declared the country sovereign. Why hasn't he done it? He's not working for the people, I'm sorry. And this is why we have to stop looking for saviors. Jesus is coming to save us. Trump's coming to save us. Kim's coming to save us. No, 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 and no. Pleiadians are coming. No, they're not. They're just not. Only we save us. That's what's never been done before. We've always waited for the savior. And it's never worked. Ever. That's not going to either. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jim had his hand up. It'll probably make it, uh, we're getting close to three hours now and uh, we'll probably wrap it up. It was yeah, on a no, three hour call with Alan, uh, THI not Alan. Really, not to be rude, I, I, I would like to jump off now because this is now eight hours for me and I need to go yeah. get some food. <laughs> thanks for coming in and thanks for the update. Yeah, and if anybody wants to learn more about this, please reach out. Um, I'm happy to help while I'm learning. It helps me, so you know where to find me. Thanks, Roger. Take care, yeah, Roger. You're, you're actually over the target, Roger, with everything you're doing, and thank you for doing that. That's yeah. fantastic what you're, what you're accomplishing up there. 
Well, Kevin, um, man, I'm, I'm just jumping in, but I do feel the target on my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's kind of how it is. But you, uh, you're definitely doing the right things. It's, it's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pulling for you. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. You Me bet. Well. We have a group uh, in America, National Liberty Alliance, and some folks know Durash, and I think he's been a guest of yours, Tommy, a couple of times. And, yes. And uh, I intend on working with Jan, and we intend to have a, a tab on our TPC Texas website that teaches uh, the true constitution of America and how it was compromised and the whole 1871 loss of DC and the 1933 Bankruptcy Act. And, and it is about education, you know. Uh, first and foremost, as Tommy has said many times, um, you know, we're looking at all humanity to have, you know, the basics, the five basics. We want clean air, clean water. We want good, nutritious food. We need folks, every human, to have shelter. Um, there's a lot of debate about what the fifth requirement is. Tommy, can you help me with that one? Energy. Yeah, so, there's uh, two point two point three billion, I think it was, or was it one point three billion? Uh, somewhere between there that don't have electricity. Right. So first and foremost, humanity needs those basics, and to the extent that we can step up and help any human wherever we are um, with our energy. And we all have energy. We've all uh, collected here. We've all contributed to TPC America. Um, there's a reason why there's 47,000 sitting there. Uh, the hardest thing is to understand who's worthy of our energy. That's one of the hardest things to do is, is determine, uh, you know, where those funds are best spent. But I believe, first and foremost, we are... Um, a teaching organization of, of what we know to be uh, tr truth and we need to propagate it. And each and every one of us with every word we speak, it carries, especially if we speak truth, it carries. It carries through individuals and those individuals speak to other individuals and, and your truth carries. You, you may not realize how far your words can go and how far your deeds can go, but they go very far. And so first and foremost, we, we need to teach people what we know, what we've learned from Tommy, what we've learned from others, what we know to be true to ourselves, to the extent that, that we can help uh, those in need, we need to reach out and do that. It's hard to vet who is really in need, but you know, uh, TPC Texas is trying to reach out in our different uh, geographical areas and understand who the food banks are, uh, what, where the solid needs are, um, you know, vet some of that ourselves. We don't want to be the food bank, but we want to contribute to those food banks uh, with, with our energy. And, uh, um, but, but we want, we want to develop our, our teaching tool. We have a website we're developing that website. We'll have tabs and links on that website to help teach others. And, and you do have to understand your audience. You have to know that, you know, some people who are very religious, you know, are not going to buy Tommy's website right off the bat. Uh, uh, other individuals for other reasons. So, so your, your websites in your specific states need to uh, be geared towards you know, the things that are verifiable, the things that people could look up for themselves and understand that maybe your truth is something they need to consider. Um, that's how we want to develop our website. And, uh, and we're working towards that uh, to the extent that TPC America can help develop websites in other states, not a bad uh, thing to do. I mean, if you can't, if you can't locate where that where you can place your energy the best in one of those you know five basic humanitarian needs we absolutely can get our word out 
and we can get it out with, uh, you know, appropriate websites and appropriate structure on those websites. Uh, the very structure that Bobby Stevens was talking about that Michael Blaha is putting together. Uh, these structures are wonderful and these websites mean something and they don't have to say everything Tommy says, but they can say the truth and they, they are, a, they become a structure, a collective structure of teaching and they draw eyes and and then your words and your deeds also propagate. And that's what we intend to do. We intend to propagate the truth about, uh, you know, how America and its constitution was compromised. We intend to, to uh, propagate uh, as much of our energy as we can um, to, and, and try to vet those needs and get them out there. So everything that you do, everything that you say, every dollar you contribute, all moves us in in that good and positive direction and and that's where we all you know that's what we all want to do we want to take humanity in a positive direction uh, it, it, I know I know that uh, uh, other states have put together some good programs and and other countries are putting together some good programs and keep the faith uh, Take it a step at a time. You know, we can't we can't build it in overnight. But every little bit, everything you do, everything you say, is uh, has such a reach you would not believe. And we are growing. We're getting bigger. We're getting stronger. And I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah, it's all about um, planting the That's seeds. It which then grows in the flower of life. So go, and always links to something else, but it will be talking about the structure. You plant the seeds and it grows, and then it grows, and then it grows. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Tommy. I'm, I'm gonna drop now, but uh, thank you. Uh, final one, I think, uh, Brett. Oops, wrong button. Thanks, Tommy. Hey, all. Great to see you. Um, I just wanted to really quickly just share um, a little bit of what we do here in Australia. Um, well, it's bright out there. Um, I'll just give a little bit of visual. Um, it's probably the main thing. I guess that I'd probably like to do at the moment um, in the uh, in hope of just, uh, I guess, um, raising hopes, um, sharing um, what some of us are doing out there. Um, got a little bit of a problem at the moment in that um, I've got an awful lot of uh, ability to um, make things happen like tiny houses for homeless, um, beautiful gardens for, um, for different purposes that um, different THI projects, etc. cetera. Um, as you can see, we've got tons of timber just sitting around. Um, this is just some quick pics of our sawmill. Um, pretty big, um, it's a pretty big operation, but we're very limited with um, with any people, with any helpers, hands at the moment to be able to make much happen. Um, that's my biggest trouble. I'm finding a um, fairly small group here in Australia. And um, we're very scattered as well. So, that, but just wanted to say, um, just wanted to give a, a little quick insight into what my family at least are, are offering THI and um, this is just a little part of it, I guess. Um, the stats here in this place are absolutely ridiculous and endless. So one day I'd like to be able to put them into something really worthwhile. Um, it's just a small part of what we do, like I was just saying, and uh, 
and um, do other things like um, wildlife caring, working for um, local wildlife and land care groups and um, growing plants and stuff like that. So got a fair bit to offer, but just a little bit limited at the moment as to um, see how I can make use of, of our product. So yeah. anyhow, yeah. just a few picks. Thanks, right. heaps, Tommy. Uh, Cheers, everyone. Great to see you. Maybe that's something that um, you can just discuss with CHI Australia and, and create the website and you can build stuff and sell it that can go to the TPC Australia and get encourage others to do the same. You know, uh, that's your contribution. You, you know, you get something for your labour and, and commission goes to TPC Australia. Oh, yep. Good. Lots and lots of thoughts there. That sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, working on it. It's a uh, process. Thanks all. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Tommy. Well, a fairly uh, global audience, um, from one side of the world to the other. That's good. Uh, thanks to uh, everyone for chiming in today. Um, I think it's been of value. I think what is clear is we need a website. Um, perhaps we need two websites, uh, revamp the People's Club um, and expand it in certain ways to include certain links and you know maybe T TPC Texas can help us with some of that. Um, and also perhaps we need some sort of TPC eBay, whereby uh, once we get it up and running, we can employ someone to do all the listings and then we'll have another Zoom call and, and perhaps something that can be included. I was kind of coming up with certain figures of how to sell them. Um, you know, obviously the shipping would be paid by the person um, who's buying it uh, per se. Uh, and maybe that can be shared amongst the cost. And maybe we look at a 7.5% uh, commission on it, where 2.5% would go to the person doing the listing and the website and then five percent to the tpc or we can switch it around you know that's just some ideas i'm putting out uh and then you know some of the stuff that you don't need can uh put money in your pocket and put money in to employ someone to do the website and also some funds going to the tpc so we'll uh, me, one aspect to the one aspect to the uh local community thing is my uh, daughter had some stuff that she needed to sell. So on her local uh, community paper, she took a picture of it and listed it for sale. People came to the door, paid her the money and took the item away. That saves transportation costs and getting it to people. If you've got a small local area that you can distribute stuff like that too, the yeah, person well, could come right to your door and pick it up rather than, than having all the shipping well, costs. Well, yeah, I get One that. One idea. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you know, if you want to do garage sales, then it's easier because the money there's no shipping involved. Um, and if you want to then put some into the TPC, from yeah, the we had sale. that COVID thing here where we couldn't leave the house and whatever, it was pretty tight in our community for a while. And what people would do is they would come to the door and pick it up and then leave that way. There was no because you weren't allowed to have garage sales and have people yeah. gathering so. The easiest way people did was list their thing on the local community and sold it, sold it. That's how my daughter raised her car insurance for, for one month by, by selling some stuff. She even painted some pictures. She's very artistic, sold her paintings that way as well. So that's one idea of how things could work. Yeah, you know, we've got um, um, at least two that I can remember. Madeline Brannan's one of them, who's an artist in the group, and she can put her paintings on. The TPC website. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't know where Ramona went. Ramona was going to speak to the CBD company you want, who's got a whole uh, range of health products, uh, all organic, that maybe we can add to the website and they'll be commissioned for the person who does the website and then, and then some commission for the TPC. Um, and that's the way we can go forward and, and and by that, we're creating more interest on a wider scale where, where we are the advertisement. You know, we're not 
um, having to, that's one of the beauty when we, we've got a load of TBC companies and we're all trading with each other. There's no need to advertise because if you've got a network of TBC people, you would encourage them to buy from the TBC. And, and technically those products should be, um, should be uh, certainly compatible to what the clowns are putting out because we don't have the overheads. We're not paying millions for advertisement and all the other stuff, you know? And that's the idea of a, a, a cooperative it is we can A, lower the, lower the cost of the, the goods, which means we'll sell more, and B, the wages or salary can be shared better and people have got more money and can go and buy more. So everyone gains. And so um, we'll, I'll get with someone and see if we can come up with a TBC eBay, but perhaps we need to look at a, a flyer. Um, and if someone wants to help with that, uh, um, please step forward. Um, I'm struggling with time. I've got four shows that I need to get out on top of the Thursday show. And um, unfortunately, I've been sidetracked with um, Alan and whatnot, <laughs> and a few other things and issues with my dad and whatnot. So I need to get back on track because I need to get somebody at least two of those shows out quickly. And so we can all go forward. So thanks to you all. Thanks for all your support and thanks for all your donations and thanks for all your ideas. Yeah, and, and thanks everybody again for your support. And please remember, like Bobby said, keep it simple, really. Simple is good. <laughs> right. Much love to all. Bye now. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank Bye. you. Good all. night. <laughs> Bye. Have a great Bye. night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, all. Bye. All the best. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Australia. <laughs> Bye. Pleasure. <laughs> See you. Well, bye, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bye, all. Bye. Bye, Tommy. Bye now.